Hello, good evening and welcome to One Life Left radio show brought to you on Resonance 104.4 FM. My name is Steve Curran. Hello, I am Simon Byron. And Anne is not here. Hang on, can you can you hear that? Not, she's trying to get into the studio. Not letting her in. No, she's holding up various items to the, to the entry system. <laughs> <laughs> there goes a tampon. No, she's no. not coming in. Where uh, is she? She is... I want to say on holiday, isn't she? On, she's in Oslo, isn't she? Apparently, yeah. I think she's in Oslo. What, what is she doing there? Oh, she's doing research for the Norwegian version of One Life. Okay, doing, doing some market research. <laughs> what, what would that be called? I don't know. If you <laughs> if you have any idea, that should be our first piece of research. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know where the d- the domain's gone. Um, yeah. Uh, so she's not here. What? Week, what are we going to do? Well, we are okay. We've got a news. Uh, we've got the news sorted. I think we also have our intern Simon. Should things go wrong? Hello, Simon. Hey, Simon. Hi. How's Hi. it going? Good. 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 You uh, gave us some bad news earlier. Yes, I did. Sorry. Do you want to tell the listeners? Uh, yeah, that I might be leaving. One left left. Believe, how long has he been here? Not that long. He's, so you've you've got a job elsewhere. Maybe. So I've. Well, are you leaving or not? I t- don't know. I honestly don't know. This is... Th- <laughs> it's not really a resignation, is it? It's a, mm, what do we, so what do we do about this? I'm not sure. Perhaps we should report him to HR, but she's in Oslo. Perhaps we should replace him. Interesting. Jordan Erica Weber, hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, what are you like at interning? I've never actually done an internship. I guess that's the point of them, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, I think what? we're getting better at hosting interns. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're getting better at leaving us. Um, so, have you had a good week? Uh, my week's been fine. Yes, I've been very, very busy working on a few projects. Haven't had a lot of time for video games, unfortunately, as we'll find out in the review section. But Spelunky is still a solid seven out excellent, of ten. Excellent, excellent. What have you been up to? Uh, I released my second game today. Did you? I did. Yeah, it's called Bang Man. Congratulations. It's called Bang Man. It's, the, it's it's only available on Android at the moment. It's coming to iOS hopefully in the new year. Um, why it's is that? It's like because you wanted to test the market first on Android, yeah, just exactly. so I think you know, make forgiving. a few tweaks. Oh, yeah, that um, makes sense. Uh, no, it's just I'm struggling to get it on iOS now <laughs> because I don't understand Macs. Realities of video yeah. game development. Um, so a couple of things. It's the only game on the Google Play Store called Bang Man. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Good, good branding. Hashtag Therefore, brands. it shows up 56th in the search results for Bang Man. Thanks, Google. <laughs> uh, so if you want to find it, I put uh, quotes either side of Bang Man and uh, then it comes up first. Uh, second thing... Um, is that at the moment it's got uh, six five star reviews, uh, which is great. Congratulations! In early That's days. like thirty stars. It is, isn't it? Um, two of which, or maybe three of which, are for one life left listeners. And <laughs> I have to say, I've gone off our seven out of ten joke <laughs> because uh, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> they've given it five stars, said really lovely things, and at the end of it, they say seven out of ten, and. Uh, Stuart Campbell noticed this yesterday and sort of retweeted it to his followers because um, it's clear that he doesn't listen to the show. Mm-hmm. Said, this is the greatest review he's ever seen. Uh, citing it as an example of, of, um, of a sort of general member of the public reviewing a video game online. And, and, it's, and they said, oh, favourite game, five stars, seven out of ten. And he thought it was <laughs> hysterical. I think it might confuse those browsing that, through. Who've, those that have already gone through the 55 other bangers. <laughs> <laughs> that genuinely happened to me as well um, when I made a, a video game a few years ago. Right. And you're a gamer. <laughs> used that in the review joke, uh, which Metacritic yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they didn't get. So funny, they? <laughs> <laughs> and that dragged us down yeah. below 80%. Right. And, and, so, you, and you didn't get your bonus. Yeah, cheers, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> Time for the news. Good. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sometime past seven on Monday the 15th of December, I'm Sega Badawi, 
And this is the news. It's been a good November for Microsoft, as sales figures have shown the Xbox One outsold the PS4 in both America and the UK. Corporate Vice President of Xbox Marketing, Mike Nichols, said, November set a new record for sales of Xbox One, and Xbox One was the best-selling console in the US and the UK, which was a bit of a superfluous quote. Sony didn't take this lying down as they opened a pop-up shop and decided to sell their limited edition PS4s for the low, low price of £19.94p. These have already sold out, and some are being sold for silly money on eBay, but more should have been made available at a normal price today. One Life Left had a pop-up shop once, but it folded. <laughs> <laughs> Strong opening from Sega Badawi. Um, did you go to this pop-up shop? I didn't. I heard about it far too late. Um, I heard about it the night before. Did you? Yeah, and uh, saw the piece and thought... There is no way I'm going to Brick Lane and queuing. All- I'm, I assume guys. you had to queue all night too. Yeah, so people. Yeah, that was the whole night. Uh, so if you go to the party on Friday, you can see the PS4 because uh, Jimmy bought one and he stood uh, there for right. yeah. for 18 hours. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was I was half tempted, but it was a cold day, and I have a PS4. Jonathan Ross was there, wasn't he? Now, is he a Microsoft employee? Is he? Well, he is, isn't he? he? Is, isn't he? he I'm surprised that they, that they let him in. Jordan, were you tempted to go down? No. No? <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't like to come to London too often. Okay, well, thanks for coming this evening. You're welcome. Um, uh, just a quick update uh, before we move on to that. Uh, J- uh, a friend of uh, the show, Jason Perkins, texted in during the show last week uh, because we wondered why they were selling 12... Uh, 12,300 That's right. of these worldwide. That's right, yeah. He says, um, PlayStation 1 launched in Japan on the 3rd of December, 12, thir- 12 3. Right. So those crazy guys built an entire marketing campaign on 1, 2, 3. He reckons that's why they're making 12,300. Well, that's 3, 1, 2 here. Well, exactly. Makes no I sense, thought Jason. that 3 was an unlucky number in Japan. Well, as was proved by the Xbox sales, then, <laughs> clearly. So that, the, the Xbox sales news, isn't that just common sense? Finally, they've dropped at the some number. Point. Yeah, at some and point. They've dropped the cost, and it's going to... It's gonna. Their sales are gonna rocket at some point. Yeah, congratulations. It's obviously, hit that threshold where people care enough. But well done to Microsoft for that. We still haven't received a copy. Have we not? I thought about dropping them a passive-aggressive note with the shortlist cutting, saying, "Have you sent one to Serial or Free Economics? <laughs> just wondering." No, send them. Forward them a picture of Jonathan Ross in the PlayStation. <laughs> so, no, you shouldn't. Just say, like, like, do you know what your staff are up to? The Amiibos, Nintendo's answers to the never-asked question, what would Mario look like if he was a Skylanders figure, are selling well. Waves 2 and 3 are already marked as sold out on Nintendo UK's website, and they are selling at high prices on third-party websites. Which reminds us, how does Mario introduce himself to Barack Hussein Obama's dog? It's Amiibo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very good. Have you, um, so these amiibos, yep. how do they work? Uh, you you get you buy them and then you put them on your Wii U gamepad, right? And then they bring things into the game. Okay, uh, which I think game? at the moment it's which Super game? Smash Brothers. Okay, I think I, th- I don't know for certain. Uh, Jordan, do you know? It is Super Smash Brothers. You okay. are correct. <laughs> Ten points. Very much. Good. Uh, that's going to stand you in good credit when we're looking for a new intern. Um, so, yeah, these have sold out pretty quickly, or certain ones of them have. And I think even a couple have been discontinued. So they are selling um, on the eBay, uh, along with the PlayStation 4s, the limited edition ones. Um, Maybe Microsoft needs to make something not very available <laughs> to make it seem more popular. Yeah, I guess so. Like the Xbox One. I mean, yeah. not, not many people have those today, apparently. Sing. Well, I do. Um, do you? Yeah. Did, did you get sent it? Oh, I can't answer that. Okay. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I went to the midnight launch. Right. Yeah. Bought one? Yeah. How was that? With money. Uh, it was great. I met some really nice people. Do you have um, a PlayStation 4? I do. Okay. I need to for work. And do you have a, a Wii U? I do. Okay. Um, so, uh, but the, the, uh, the games industry has been limiting stuff recently, so the Amiibos and the PlayStation 4. Um, did you see how you can get a PlayStation 4 if you didn't queue up? I did not they see this. They announced... Um, a, uh, a web treasure hunt um, okay. that you get 100 people a day are going to be able to buy them for 400 pounds. Uh, four o'clock was uh, the time today that they put the clue live and the website crashed. <laughs> I'm noticing a theme. Yes. PlayStation 4, four o'clock. Oh, yeah. 400. It's five o'clock tomorrow. So maybe that's. Uh, maybe it'll be 500 pounds. <laughs> exactly. Maybe um, everyone will get a PlayStation 5. But yeah, no, it's, a, it's it, what you had to do. Uh, they put 200 uh, characters online, and these clues refer to one of them, which will have a secret link, which will then take you through to game where you can register your interest. Okay. Um, 
what happened was that you can just share that link around. So just go on NeoGAF tomorrow <laughs> at five o'clock and somebody will post it for you. What do you do when your dodgy attempt to do an unauthorised sequel to PC cult hit Stalker gets banned by Kickstarter? Well, you could change its name slightly and put it on an obscure crowdfunding site, Worldwide Funder, instead. This is what developer West Games have done, and they are asking for $600,000 to complete Stalker Apocalypse. How much of that money will go towards legal fees isn't made clear in their pitch video, but we'd expect copyright lawyers cost a pretty penny. Have you ever played Stalker, Simon? I have. I played about uh, five minutes of the second one, um, which I don't... Sorry, was it a sequel or a, or a, a slight expansion? Um, I didn't fully understand it. Mm. I've never played it, and so okay. I know very little Jordan. about it or this new story. No, no, okay. I've never played Stalker. How do we feel about this story? Because it keeps popping up, doesn't it? This specific story about, about this game. People, want, people who worked on Stalker but don't have the copyright. Right. I mean, it is a beloved game amongst some sort of hardcore FPS fans, right? Is that right? It is an FPS, isn't it? It is, yes. Okay, just checking. Uh, and so I can understand that that's tend to be those tend to be the the titles that do really really well on crowdfunding sort of uh, crowdfunding sites, ones that can rely on nostalgia and a sort of dedication to the brand. Now the problem is the brand is the one thing owned yeah. by the people who uh, by by the people who didn't make the game. Didn't some of them then go on to do Metro and um, right that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, it's odd. I mean, I've I've got very little interest in this, um, but uh, the stories that I've seen seem to be reporting on it quite affectionately, which mm. it seems like it's one rule for people who made Stalker and one and one rule for everybody else. That I mean, I think isn't copyright infringement bad? I, th- I think I so. Think so. Depends who's doing the infringing and right. who is infringed but against. Pe- people were just joking about the fact that this is called Stalker. Um, Whereas uh, a common trick in video games um, to get around the fact that you can't trademark an ordinary word is to make it an acronym. So the previous stalker, I think, was S dot T dot. And so these guys have um, put their logo up. uh, and It's called Stalker something or other. But um, they put it on a metal sign where there are no dots between the letters, but there are screws. Screws. (laughs) Isn't that what people do with number plates when they want they want to make their numbers look more like letters? Yeah. The police don't like it very much. Right. (laughs) Do you you find that out through experience? Yeah, it's when I was trying to get 5TE for my uh, my dodgem. Yeah, so uh, what's going to happen with this? Do you think they're going to get away with it? I think they'll get away with it to the point that they start to make any money and then they'll stop getting away with it. Um, I've never heard of this crowdfunding site before either and that sounds a bit Sorry, I thought that was a joke from Sega... Badawi, is this not on Kickstarter? No, I don't think so. Is it not? Worldwidefunder.com. Time for... So I um, thought it was a joke. Intern number one. Simon okay. looks like he's about to uh, yeah, that's what he's do here. some research. Uh, take some notes, Jordan. That's what he's here for. Yeah. <laughs> Papers, Please is finally available on the iPad, but not without some issues. The game had to be resubmitted to the App Store with the nudity in the full body scanning section removed as the reviewer felt it was less a case of papers please and more a case of no pornographic content please, we're Apple. However, this has proven to be a big misunderstanding and Apple now say that the nudity can be included. Tops off all round. What happened here then? Uh, the original game um, sees you play the role of a um, border guard operating at a fictional um, Eastern European country, um, and you'll set a series of challenges. Uh, sorry, it, well, also known as your job. Um, <laughs> I do find my, my job a series of challenges. Um, your job is to um, admit. Uh, people across the border citizens from one side of the border to the other um it starts off quite simple uh, but then the rules become increasingly complicated um and further on in the game um one of the rules is to determine whether the um those trying to cross the border are carrying anything that they shouldn't on their persons so you can uh, x-ray them um which in the pc game because anything goes on the pc um, meant that you saw a bit too much steve really yep 
um, like contraband and um, is that weapons. How those full body scanners work because I've yeah. been I've been assured they can't see anything. <laughs> but even so, I do as I'm going through them. I like to wink just in case. <laughs> Maybe that's just with you. Does your eyes show up on an X-ray though? I'm not well, sure. Well, who knows? Right. If they if they're not telling the truth about other parts of me. <laughs> Maybe they're just taking full-on photos, right. in which case, you know... I like to stand there with my hands behind my head. That's how I do it. Because I put my hands up, but I put my thumbs up. <laughs> <as well. laughs> um, so uh, Apple has a um, uh, pretty strict policy, unless you're Telltale Games, actually, in which case um, they did allow um, some boobs, I can say that because uh, that's biology, biology. Um, uh, in The Wolf Among Us, uh, Series 2. Some boobs. Yeah, a number of them. How many? <laughs> Divisible by two. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Um, uh, but uh, they've changed their mind now, and I believe uh, this new story is already out of date because the game has been patched, and you can now, if you want to, you can thoroughly in, examine. You? Exactly. Um, and I, I have to say, it, uh, it feels like this was the format that the game was made for. It's so much better on... I mean, it's a brilliant game anyway. I, it's, I, I think what it does is absolutely stunning um it takes uh it really does make you because uh, you get money for letting people across the border um which you then have to feed your family keep them warm and pay your rent um and there are sob stories of people going through um and, you, and it's it's a very raw game um it works brilliantly on, on, on ipad um, i thoroughly recommend it so if there were boobs in Bangman, and if it was on ios yet do you think you would have been able to you know get it through as well I mean, do you think that the only reason Papers, Please managed to do, you know, deal with this is because of who they are? Well, I, I saw the problems that Lucas uh, Pope was going to have, and that's why um, the clues in, in the title, Steve, it's Bang Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jordan, you were going to say something. I was just going to say that Papers, Please won the Game City Prize this it year. It did, didn't it? And quite it rightly did. so. It won a BAFTA as well last year, didn't it? Um, Probably. I think it was the first Game City Prize I agreed with, because Journey <laughs> won last year, didn't it? Yeah. I know. Uh, then Minecraft won the first one, didn't it? Yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay. So maybe it's just Journey I dislike then. Let's see. And finally, happy 21st birthday, Doom. On Friday, it was 21 years since the influential game was released. Designer John Romero joined in the fun by posting photos of the game's development and exclusive information to his Twitter feed. So now Doom is old enough to drink in America. If it was English, then it would already be fully into its alcoholic recovery program. Personally, I'm looking forward to Up Down Left Right's 21st birthday on July the 1st, 2035. Well, happy birthday to Doom. Yes, uh, I remember it coming out, actually. I was working um, at EMAP. Yeah, Sorry, worked. I'm just laughing because I was three, so well, <laughs> I don't remember that happening. Well, we can all laugh because we were three. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, it, uh, it, it broke the mould, didn't it? It was the first game to, pop li- uh, to use uh, shareware as um, a means of distribution, or the first one to be fully successful doing it mm, scary things as well I mean you probably weren't scared Jordan because you no, were she was busy laughing while yeah, being, laughing. being three oh, it was a very very frightening game yeah Be flickering right. lights I, you know it was a game that taught me a flickering light is scary right uh, but uh, but if only you could talk to the monsters, of course. It <laughs> was the famous Edge yeah. review. It's, been, it's been uh, the anniversary of that quote as well. Then, gave it, it six out of ten, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. No. Um, yes. Congratulations. I, th- I think. Uh, yeah. I've not played any of the any of the modern ones, though, have you? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I I remember the excitement. I was working as a journalist when Doom Three was announced. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, we could Jordan all. Jordan was younger that. than us then. <laughs> <laughs> My friends at university tried to. They sat me down in a dark room with headphones and got me to play that because they thought I'd be scared, but I wasn't at all. Really? Yeah. You were laughing. Where, I was laughing. Where are those people now? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen them in a while. Right. <laughs> Good. I've got an update. Uh, thanks to Simon on this uh, crowdfunding site uh, that Stalker apocalypse is on um it genuinely looks like a scam it looks like someone set up um a, 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 a website to look like kickstarter in the hope that we'll people will think it's kickstarter <laughs> that's so true i suppose we should test it out we wouldn't be journalists if we didn't test it out no simon have you got your credit card simon put, put your credit card <laughs> details you, in no just write it down your credit card because <laughs> we haven't got time now okay uh, just write it down with your pin number and yep. um, it'll all be fine well do thanks sega one life left video game news with Anne Scantleberry.
is One Life Left on Resonance 104.4 FM. Resonance is a radio station in London and it is absolutely fabulous. Of course, you might be listening on the internet as well. We're streaming live at... Where's Sega Badawi when you need oh, him? A disaster. www.resonancefm.com So, uh, it's been a busy, busy week for One Life Left. It's going to be a busier week this week, isn't it, Simon? Yep, we've got our Christmas party on Friday. We are all sold out. Uh, Looking forward to it. Uh, Steve, you're coming? I am definitely going to be there. Jordan, you you coming? Of course. Simon, are you coming? No, sorry. Why not? Because I'm in Germany. Germany, okay. interesting. Yeah. What's yeah. what's in Germany? Uh, my family. Okay. Anyone anyone else in Germany? Friends, family. Mm, anyone anyone else? Don't think so. Mm. It's an empty country. Do they have video game karaoke in Germany? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> well, okay. don't go telling them about it. No, it won't do. Okay. It's going right. to be good. Uh, doors open at half six. There will be some tickets on sale tomorrow on the website. Our final batch of staff tickets. This is for the contributors who are unable to attend, who we had reserved, reserved tickets for. We're going to be putting those tickets for sale on the website. If you're listening to the podcast, they might have sold out. They might not. Go and check them out. I think the URL is... Simon, what's the URL for the tickets? Uh, www. Yeah, that's all you're asking that, Simon. It's on It's on Twitter. Yeah. It'll be on our Twitter, which is twitter.com slash one life left. This piece of music, by the way, it's from chipmusic.org, and it is Tio Mackie, and it's called Sugar High. Good stuff. Jordan. Hello. Uh, so how's it going? That's pretty good. Good. What have you been up to recently? Uh, I played this new game today um, called Bang Man. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought it was going to be about something else. Right. Was there any nudity it in it? Uh, no, there wasn't. I thought there might be from the title, but Sorry, there wasn't. Did you, um, did you enjoy it? It was okay, was despite it? the lack of nudity. <laughs> Apart from that, though, what have you been doing? You, yeah, you, you're not a, uh, a paid guest to come and uh, promote my stuff, are you? No, no. Although you could be. I <laughs> could. Would that cost? I probably won't review okay. your game. <laughs> Thanks. That wouldn't be ethical. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I'm, I'm going to review it later, so... Yeah. Oh, I'm all about ethics. But it's, but it's, a, it's a genuine question, actually. So I was trying to get Keith Stewart to name it as his favourite game of the year today, and someone said, I'm going to point out... No, I'm going to patrol your ethics. He's, well, he's going to walk up and down your ethics. Well, first of all, I, yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware that my ethics needed patrolling. But secondly, I thought, well, what's wrong with me Like just saying, you know, like if Keith... Like, I'm not. Keith then said, well, you haven't sent me any money, so therefore I, I can't be. And I'm like, well, now you have to name it as your favourite game to prove that... that You've got that he's not, yeah. Yeah. Could you, also, could I you mean, not review it? Keith has been around so long that he knows everyone. So he, I mean, yeah. Surely he Where can't he review anything. Where three? <laughs> <laughs> Patrol, I don't know. Maybe he's my dad. Patrol oh. My Ethics sounds like a brilliant game. Right. Maybe it's a stealth game, game I think. think. Um, so you've been doing that. What else have you been up to? You, you're, uh, you're, oh, gosh, we, we, we should talk about your professional life because we just sort of introduced you as if everybody as if, knows you. I mean, a lot of people do. Right. So yeah. who, who are you? Uh, I'm Jordan Erica Weber. <laughs> what three, na- three names, Jordan. Let's three do names, it up first. Like Why three killer. names, not two names? Um, because if you just say Jordan Webber, people think I'm a man. Why would they make that assumption? Because I work in video games. Uh, it's uh, like uh, Mr. Lee Alexander, I guess, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> sure. Mr. Keza McDonald. Right. <laughs> so you're a, uh, a video game writer? I am. Who do you yes. write for? Uh, I write for The Guardian and The Observer and PC Gamer and Kotaku UK and GamesTM and X1. And I present for Family Gamer TV as right. well. Do any of those review Android games? Uh, no. Interesting. Sorry, <laughs> Wait, I'm sure. I'm sure that um, the Guardian didn't they do on a bit on space pants? Yeah, probably. He's probably it's not my in. area. Yeah, whoa, backpedaling. Um, who do you prefer writing for? <laughs> Who's the best? <laughs> Wait, which ones of my editors listen to this show? Uh, the Guardian, obviously. Right. Yes, my. Uh, it's the one I said first. It's the one I tell my relatives. Uh, and you're, um, you're, yes, you're part of the Guardian family, aren't you? That's which. Uh, That's the one. Yeah, Keith's the dad. Yeah, uh, I'm the little girl. <laughs> okay, and who, who else is? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, there's a there's an event happening in January though where right. you can find out who the people are that I've forgotten who okay. are my coworkers. What what is this one of them event? might be called Andy. Um, it's called Meet the Guardian Games Writers. Okay, it's happening on I think January the twenty second. Right. There's going to be tea and cake, and you have to pay money, but that's okay because you get to see how us. Else was, yeah, exactly. So what will be happening uh, when you meet your readers? I'm really not sure. I think they get to ask us questions um, of any nature, really. Any nature. Yeah. Interesting. So I mean, we're sort of limits. doing that right now, aren't we? <laughs> I suppose so. I was yeah. It'll be like this, <laughs> except with people who read The Guardian. And tea and cake. Are you and saying that we cake. don't read The Guardian? 
Uh, I, I don't know. I would can't even send me notifications on my phone, actually. That's how good friends we are. Yeah. Wow, so you read my work then. I what do, do you, read what your do you work. think of it? Very good. I'm a big fan of it, actually. Um, uh, and so you're, you're also. Um, are you part of Game City? The no, I just I type covered stuff? Game City this year for The Guardian. I did a daily show. Um, they might be putting it on television. Okay. Knox TV might be making a show out of it, but it went up on The Guardian Games blog. I interviewed various people. Who uh, like like who? Like Mike Bithell <laughs> and uh, uh, Adriel hey. and people like that. Uh, they, I, they've both been on One Life Left. I actually I counted and I interviewed I think almost twice as many women as I did men. Why? So, yeah, I'm pretty Keith. However, he did about five and he four men and one woman. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag everyday sexism. Um, yeah, I, somebody's writing a book about uh, Gamergate, aren't they? Did you I see this? Saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it from the cover. I thought it was an erotic thriller. <laughs> I was quite excited. I mean, you know, I, I I think writing a book is dignifying it somewhat. When it would just be some words that will be you can download surely. I really, really hope it is written in a sort of a fictional noir voice. Mm. Like I, I think it could be. Let's could never be find out, shall we? Oh, Let's I'll never find out. out. Yeah. Um, would you say it's been a good year for video games, Jordan? It hasn't actually been that good. What with Gamergate and everything? Put that to us. Put that to one side. I mean, Game City was fun. Was was good, wasn't it? Yeah, Game City was good. Uh-huh. I am. Um, Keith was asking me what my favourite games of the year were for the Guardian thing, and I couldn't. All of all the ones I came up with, none of them were were triple A games. Best answer to that question is just to look at Keith. <laughs> it was just over look email. at him. Just, uh, yeah, well, you can send an emoticon okay. that does this. Look at him just with an air of absolute pure superiority. And just the sort of gaze that says, I can't believe you're even asking that question, and just say, I don't play favourites, Keith. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's not However, ethical. that said, what is your favourite game of the year? I picked five. Okay. Uh, Sims 4. Uh, not 80, played? No. Okay. 80 Days? Uh, no, I, I think that's the sort of game I'm going to dislike. I, I'm pretty sure it is. Simon. Yeah. It's everybody else's favourite yeah, game. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of reading. Uh, yeah. Mm. Um... Uh, what else did I pick? Kitty Powers Matchmaker. Okay, that's, that, that's the first time I've heard a, of that. It's a dating game on iPad okay. where you play a matchmaker and you have to set people up together. And they, um, it has all genders in, and uh, you can get married to somebody of, of your your own gender, which is nice. Um, but you have to do like mini games to make sure the date goes well. So you send them to a restaurant, and you have to do things like remember what they're wearing and um, a spin. Uh, you pull the love handle to spin the wheel <laughs> to get the conversation topic that you want to like talk real about. Life. That's real life, does, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Any um, so other, uh, I think. this war of mine? Oh yes, yeah. I uh, I really like the look of that. Um, mm. I've not. I've got it. I've just not been able to spend as much time with it as I would like. But yeah, really interesting take on the uh, on the war game. Mm. Although apparently not as realistic as it seems. Someone okay. at PC Gamer was saying that they'd heard uh, from someone who lived through a modern war situation like that, and the idea that everyone turns into bandits is apparently completely false, although useful for a video game. Mm. Road not taken. I didn't put that on my list. I actually reviewed that quite poorly for Mac format. Game year. Three out of five. Didn't understand it. Probably That's, This not. is on you, mm. not on the game. I almost, almost went onto Twitter the other day just to tell uh, Dan Cook how much I love him because of that game. Because right. I just, I can't, I've not been able to stop thinking about that video game since I played it. I am, um, so I'm not, sorry, not, not moving away from that, but um, I worked on the PR for Zookeeper a few years ago and Tom Bramwell, um, this, uh, I was reminded of this because he recently left Eurogamer, um, he reviewed it and gave it six out of ten, uh, so three out of five uh, in your terms, Jordan. And um, I, I think you completely have to respect everybody's right to an opinion mm-hmm. apart from when it's wrong. Yeah. And... Um, Tom, to his credit, I said to him, you know, I don't hassle a lot of people or what have you, but I just said, I genuinely think you've got this wrong, Tom. And it was the first example of um, anybody publicly changing his opinion. So he re-reviewed it for Eurogamer two months later and just said, actually, I've been playing this loads now and uh, and gave it. So Steve is giving you that opportunity. I I, I mean, it's for a print magazine, so I'm afraid I can't. But is that so Polygon? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Why does that mean you can't, can't change your mind? Uh, well, just because it's print, print magazine, it's, it's already out there. So it's you can you can re you can totally re-review something later. Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, I think it's one of the great things about being adults that we're p- 
perfectly able to change our minds. I've changed my mind many times about Simon. Well, and I used to think it was a good thing about being an adult that you could change your mind, but I don't yeah, now. No. Perfect. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to think about this. I'm sure there are games that I've changed my mind about as well uh, all the time. And, and Road Not Taken blew me away completely. I was, I, it, it was, you're not alone to give it a you sort of mediocre review. Uh, in many ways, you're one of the few people who's actually bothered to review it because it's not hardly made any impact at all. And I think it's a shame because it's it's hugely important video game about very, very, very big subjects. Um, the end. But um, I don't think that I don't think what he did is similar to what Polygon do. Um, I think that the Polygon sort of continual appraisal is. Um, is, a, is their solution to a problem that they find where you've got to be first on the internet, mm. but, they, but they're admitting that you cannot make, you, that you can't be right immediately? Because games are so different now to how they used to be that it's impossible to appraise them properly <clears throat> when you're trying to feed um, everybody's sort of desperate need for information. So, I mean, yeah, I, know, I, I think, I also think um, they've got into trouble for it. The Sim City launch the case. Yeah, in Metacritic didn't like it, did they? Did they not? Metacritic only accepts the first score that you give. Okay. Unless that's changed since I heard that. Right. Aren't Polygon just doing that so that people have to read the review again and give them more page views? I guess so, but that also seems a little hissy of uh, Metacritic, doesn't it? I mean, surely they, to, to given that that uh, you know they, the reason that they exist was a uh, was uh, um, to aggregate scores, which actually anybody can do. You know, you see that all the time now. VG twenty four seven. You know, the moment a, a new game comes out, they, they they they're collating all the scores for you straight away. So, but so its purpose has been eroded Metacritic's argument was that if they let people change the scores then they would put the magazines the outlets under more pressure from PRs and more opportunity for corruption so to take that Eurogamer example uh, you know that 7 out of 10 as funny as it was from a personal point of view was genuinely a a really punishing thing for us at the time because it dragged our Metacritic down Uh, and if we could have just changed that one score our Metacritic would have been up around 85 or something so suddenly there's an awful lot of pressure after the effect because magazines get this power to say look we will put this down but then you know we'll put it up if you pay us a billion pounds I take take the point I, I I agree with you it's just that was their argument yeah but you know um something like zookeeper then or um what game was yours was it um Chime? Doesn't matter. okay right sorry um those games have not changed significantly mm-hmm. and so therefore the opportunity to reappraise them shouldn't be as important as games that rely on server-side technology new modes all yeah, that sort of stuff completely and that's that's the problem that you have with something like destiny uh, where the game experience fundamentally right now it's completely different from the game to experience at launch in a in a in a negative way because you've seen that stuff about the DLC and right. people yep. who buy that game now cannot play the weekly raids with their friends right. because you need to get the DLC as well. Yep. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like really, really badly. I have to say though, but if if Metacritic seem to think that um that would happen from the sites whose scores they take. They should not take those scores from those sites. Well, because <laughs> like, because yeah, you can't change scores. Right? Fun- fundamentally, we're arguing about something completely pointless anyway. Because scores are stupid. Yeah, yeah. Yes, like, I agree. You cannot assign three out of five. <laughs> 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 That's what no scores. Us down this, down this right. value. Yeah, I mean, it's not about the. It shouldn't be about the number. It should be about the the text and the review. Unfortunately, as you can see by the you know the reason VG twenty four seven immediately scrabbled to get those numbers up there is because that's all anyone cares about and i've said this on the show before but when edge ran a, an article uh, ran an issue where instead of scores we had numbers um question marks sorry instead of scores we had question marks printed at the end of reviews well, we even printed the the scores on another page and the thing said said at the start of the reviews intro it said you know if you really want the scores for these reviews please p- turn to page whatever it was 112 and you'll find the scores there we received more complaints for that issue than we did for all of the other issues well, including the one with the, <laughs> including the with the with the lady parts on the front exactly including that one <laughs> uh, we received more complaints that there weren't any scores everyone was like we, uh, my issue's been misprinted there's a question mark there. <laughs> that's not how misprints work Jordan um, where can we get these tickets to meet you then uh, <laughs> you'd have to ask because you seem absolutely no fascinating thank you um, so, uh, so and there'll it, be cake is it in january uh yes january i think it's the 22nd okay and we can follow you how i'm on twitter uh j-a-w-s-e-w great thanks for coming on you're gonna stick around yeah sure why not <laughs> <laughs> what's now should we have a bit of music and yes. then we'll do some letters okay
So not only did I just get sucked into a score <laughs> argument, then as soon as we were on off air, and I said, oh, I can't believe we've just been talking about scores again. We got talking about the best type of score. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's five. Five. <laughs> five. Well, five's good. Yeah. There's nothing next to out of three, you no. know? What about just the thumbs up and thumbs down? Yeah, what does uh, Kotaku do? Uh, it does. You, sh- you should play this. But, but yeah, or, or not. Don't play this. Well, it depends who you are. You know, don't tell me to play Gran Turismo. I find it boring. I gave Shogun Total War 0% for PC Game Awards. <laughs> Did you? Because... Uh, Gillen got me to review Did a game printed? I wouldn't like. Yeah, it was a, it was an issue where people were meant to review the opposite of the games okay. they like, and Kieran was making a point, which still you know resonates today. That's why PC Gamer doesn't have review scores anymore, as far as I know. I haven't read it. I write then. for PC Gamer, and they do have review scores. Oh, okay, my mistake. <laughs> Apology. Good. Uh, what what music is this, Steve? Oh, sorry. Yes, of course. This is a band whose name I always have uh, trouble pronouncing. I think they're called Years My Eye and it's called Bizarre Creature. Good. Still, still going on. I'm just gonna have to find the letters theme if you just bear with me. Yeah, a no, no problem. Found it. Okay. Ready? Go. Tier two thirds of the One Life left team and leader of the Deposity Anne Jordan. He's making a list, he's checking it twice. I am of course referring to Keith Stewart, who has been blatantly plagiarising the list idea, originally coined in every way by Team One Life Left, which gets him immediate placement on top of the list. With that in mind, which games and developers are on your naughty and nice lists this year and why? Interesting. That's a good question, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to um, go for naughty list. Nintendo. Why is that? I've been playing uh, Wind Waker HD, uh, the remake of Legend of Zelda, um, which incidentally, while we're talking about scores, got a 10 out of 10 from Eurogamer. Um, really? Okay. I went out of my way to buy this game, even though I played it and di- sorry, even though I bought it before on GameCube and never finished it then. Um, I got it off eBay because it's, it's out of stock everywhere because everything Nintendo is out of stock because they don't know what they're doing. Um, bought it off eBay and uh, yeah, I think it's all well and good updating a game for visuals, uh, for play mechanics. So, you know, you can tell that they've sort of unpicked part of the code to um, incorporate the Wii U gamepad, for example, all that sort of thing. What they've left alone is the awful control system that I think everybody had forgotten about, which is, you know, sure you present with this lovely world and all the rest of it, but it's just so frustrating traversing it or in combat that I genuinely, two, two or three hours in, I, yeah, that is going right back. I, like, all they needed to do, uh, Resident Evil is being remade and they are updating the control system and, and I think that is not an admission that your first one was bad, it's just that things have moved on. Games should know that when that I, I do not want to throw myself off a cliff or roll into a wall for no reason. You're listening to One Life Left. This is week two of Simon's Wii U Journey to the Canal. <laughs> that would be on my naughty list. What would be on yours? Uh, I would put Creative Assembly on my nice list. Right. Because they used to be on the naughty list as developers of Shogun, 0% of PC Gamer. But uh, Alien Isolation is an absolutely fantastic game. Jordan, naughty or nice? I mean, I was trying to look at my favourite games of the year and work out who the developers were, but I can't remember who any of them are. Don't play favourites, Jordan. So I'm going to say that it wouldn't be ethical for me to have a nice or a naughty list. <laughs> Good. Uh, Jordan, do you have a letter? Oh, I do. Um, it's from Alex Washtel, who interestingly could be a girl or a boy, so I won't use pronouns. Uh, hello, Team One Life Left. It's Super special guest, Jordan, and Simon the intern. See, I'm first. Awkward. He's um, a beautiful girl. Christmas is quickly approaching, as well as a time to see our loved ones, exchange presents, drink too much, and stuff our faces. It's often a good time for playing some games as well. How does gaming factor into your holiday? Do you use the opportunity to introduce family members to the joys of multiplayer gaming gathered around the TV? Or do you prefer to wait until everyone is sedated from Turkey and sat in front of the EastEnders Christmas special to sneak away and play something by yourself for a bit of peace and quiet? Merry Christmas. See you all at the Christmas party. See you there, Alex. Yeah, um, so I... um 
Again, back to the Wii U. I dug out my, my old Wii controllers and hooked those up, synced them with the Wii U uh, to play some Mario Kart, which I enjoyed at the weekend. Um, Three player Mario, Mario Kart with uh, my wife and my son. It's the first game I've played multiplayer with my six year old son, and we had a really brilliant time. Oh, excellent. Um, yeah, so uh, there's going to be four player Mario Kart in the Byron household. Uh, there'll be single player Spelunky <laughs> in the current <laughs> household. Yeah. I'll, be, uh, I'll be sitting there um, paying attention or pretending to pay attention while my girlfriend cooks Christmas dinner and playing Spelunky's Daily Challenge and likely doing what I do every time which is get 20 minutes in and die in some stupid frustrating way and throw my Vita gently at something soft. What will you be, what will you be up to, Jordan? Well, I usually use my brothers and sisters for Family Gamer TV. I, Whenever I visit, I do lots of film so that I can make money off of them. Is that, yeah, um, I say, is that ethical? I think I will probably be trying to play, I'm not sure if they're getting it for Christmas, but if they are, Super Smash Brothers, because I'm the eldest of eight, and apparently you can play eight player. Excellent. Have you just ruined someone's Christmas present? Sounds Maybe. like... <laughs> they, they probably it's not from me, enjoy. so it's fine. It's okay. Uh, Steve, you should read one of your letters. Okay, uh, this is from Rahul Shah. It says, Hello, lovely people, and SSG Die Hard is obviously a great Christmas movie. What is the video game equivalent of an alternative Christmas movie? Actually, he goes on to say, are there any Christmas games before we delve into alternative Christmas games? Are there any Christmas games? There's Nights. Isn't Christmas there? Nights. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas, very special Christmas yeah. Nights. Um, everyone always says Mario 64 is yeah. the quintessential Snowy Christmas level, game. Yeah. Snowy level of yeah. that. Lots of slippy, slide, slippy slidey ice yeah. world levels in video games. Uh, generally, it wasn't there. I want to say, like... A sensible software like Cannon Fodder, Whisk, Cannon or... Fodder, oh, that was, um, they used to do. Um, it was a demo on Amiga Power. It was sensible soccer with the Cannon Fodder grenade. Right, which okay. is fine. Um, there are Angry Birds, and people always release Christmas versions. They do, don't, don't they? they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's um, uh, that film that came out a couple of years ago that ruined all the children's Christmases because it said a certain something about Santa. There's a video game equivalent of that. I can't remember so what it's what? called. Gu- is it called Guardians? Something like that? Legends? Uh, okay. something, it said something about Santa and the Easter Bunny that apparently was upsetting uh, right. to a lot of children. Right. Robert Wells writes, Dear lovely people of One Life Left, it's that time again. The tree is up, the stockings are hung, a mince pie has been earmarked for Rudolph. What do you want for Christmas? That's really nice of him, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Robert. Robert. I guess we'll see you at the Christmas party. It gives you got, four yeah. days to so go what would, shopping. What would we like? I mean, I guess that's Ooh. why he's emailing in. What would we like for Christmas from him? Mm. He says, have you been good enough to get it? Pip, pip. Robert, um... Flights to GDC. I think I think if that's not asking too much, yeah. I'd love to go to GDC. If it's if it's if it is asking too much, Robert, just one flight to GDC. Yeah, that would be do. A great. Or, help. You don't have to get accommodation, although that'd be lovely as well. Uh, maybe having a word with Microsoft, getting an Xbox One for us, that'd be nice. Um, I don't know. Peace I have an Amazon help. wish list. Do you? Uh, yeah, you yeah, can. So you, if you look me up, go look at that. Yeah. Can you, right, so that saves that. Um, I just like a bit. Of, I, I'm looking forward to Christmas for time to play some games. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. Yeah. Nice, so you want the gift of time. I do want the oh. gift of time, yes. Steve, you've got one more. Oh, Jamie Firth. Dear all, Christmas is coming and Channel 5 is slowly releasing a steady stream of 100% classic Christmas films. Respect Yo Elf, Badger Claws and The Little Unicorn That Saved Boxing Day to name but three. But what classic Christmas movie license do you think would make a wonderful video game? It's from Jamie. Christmas movie... Christmas movie license. I mean, we've had Home Alone, haven't we already? We have a Christmas that, yeah. movie. We've had Die Hard as well. Thinking about it, yeah. Uh, and there was a there was a Grinch game as well that was pretty good. Mm. So they've done them all. They've done them all. Jingle uh, all the way. Oh, I love that. Film. <laughs> <laughs> you could quite easily make a game of that. I'm watching a lot of uh, made-for-TV Hallmark and ABC Family Christmas movies at the moment. It's uh, you know nice, pleasant things. Generally involve a woman who doesn't believe in Christmas, doesn't have the Christmas spirit, goes wow. to a small town, middle of America, has some kind of accident, right. but not a you know not a serious accident. Okay. 
that results in her meeting a handsome man, usually a widower with a cute little child. Right. They marry, fall in love. Oh, sorry, not quite yet. They get together. There's a first bit where it's like, I wouldn't marry if you were the last man slash woman on earth. Right. Then they get together. He teaches her the spirit of Christmas, and then they get married. It's basically all of them. And um, yeah, sounds sounds like that might so be, a good be push X to get spirit push, of Christmas. Push X to get Christmas. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Simon. I wasn't sure where I was going with right, that. Well, there you, you go. put a cap on it. <laughs> if you uh, if you've got a letter you want to send to One Life Left, how do you how do you do that? Simon? Email team at onelifeleft.com. It's your last chance. Uh, like the show next week will be your last chance to get something in 2014. So tell us about your year. What you're looking forward to for next year. You're needed in surgery immediately. You're the only one that can do this. You're going to have to operate. Dr. Avatar, operating room dictation on patient Clark, Isaac. Operative diagnosis, traumatic amputation of the left arm with simultaneous multi-organism infection from necrotic material. Estimated blood loss 1,000 cc's, OR time 15 hours. Mr. Clark was evacuated from the mining ship Ishimura in critical condition following penetrating trauma and complete amputation from the proximal one-third of the humerus. The site of transection was so precise that it afforded opportunity to realign the extremity, so a plate and screws was employed with protection of the axillary nerve. Subsequent brachial plexus nerve transfer and vascular repair was then performed. However, skin and muscle flap creation proved impossible given the sheer degree of infective infiltration that persisted despite debridement. Evidently, the flesh-eating bacteria present on the organism which attacked the patient were not adequately controlled by perioperative antibiotics. The procedure was discontinued and he was immediately started on high-dose vancomycin. The patient will be held in an isolation unit while we observe whether the flesh degradation will outpace his antibiotic therapy or not. Ending dictation for patient Clark, comma, Isaac. This is the brilliant clam and monster land. Um, what were we talking about off air? We were talking about whether we could sneak an extra episode of One Life Left in. <laughs> no, um, I mean, I mean before that. We okay. were talking about we were talking about something else. Uh, a story I was telling. I thought, oh, I should be talking about this on air. Can't have been interesting, could it? But well, neither of us were listening. No. Uh, ah. Okay. I don't think you were. I'm sure I was. Everyone was just looking at their phones. Really. Anyway, whatever, doesn't matter. I mean, it was fa- Before absolutely that... fascinating, it really was. <laughs> Before that, it was the brilliant Dr. Avatar. Uh, he reco- That's what I was going to say. Right. He recorded that um, He recorded that while he was on call. Did he? <laughs> uh, and I'm not sure if that's allowed, but well done to him. Let's say right, it is. Forgetting that, forgetting that. He better hope so, or you've just got him in a lot of yeah, trouble. Yeah, and um, if we have got him into trouble, it was nothing to do with us. Well, absolutely wasn't anything to do with us at all. Went to a break room, so if you heard the sound of anyone... <laughs> Anyone seri- seriously injured in the background? <laughs> well, I'm sure he fixed them afterwards. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the reviews now, I guess. We're going with it, we're running so, out of time. We are, aren't we? The problem is, it's kind of been another spelunky week for me, so... Well, let's not spoil it. see what happens. Okay, Simon, what have you been playing this week? I have been playing um, a lot of games, uh, but the one I'm going to talk about is um, Killzone on the PlayStation Vita. Killzone? Yeah, well, exactly. I um, 
lifted up a while ago. How in did this happen, s- Simon? In, in a sale. Okay. I think I paid £8 for it from Amazon. But, um, yeah, uh, it's. I mean, I'm no fan of Killzone at all, but this is really good. Um, and I'd seen a lot of people talk about how really good it was, and I didn't believe them. Then it got to about £8 on Amazon, and I'm like, OK, well, I'm there. Everyone says it's really good. I mean, you know, they weren't wrong about Proteus, were they? <laughs> These people and that journey and 80 days and, you know. You haven't even played 80 days. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I will do. Stop um, second guess, guessing yourself. Do um, you like Papers, Please? I do love Papers, right, Please, then. actually. Um, so, yeah, it's a first-person game set in the series of the Killzone games, which were originally developed by Gorilla, although this hails from Sony Cambridge. Um... Yeah, I couldn't tell you a great deal about what goes on in the Killzone games, having not played many of them. Um, I thought Killzone on the PlayStation 4 was incredibly tedious. Uh, I lasted an hour or so in that. Um, Yeah, and this is just brilliant. It's a a really tight first-person shooter, um, which... uh, on the Vita, it just looks absolutely spectacular. It's got these levels that you're, you're sort of inserted on a drone and you swoop through all the scenery, you get out, and then um, off you go. Uh, you're, you, you're generally accompanied by an NPC. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just really, really good fun. Small um, levels that take, I don't know, probably 20, 25 minutes a piece. Of course, the advantage of the Vita is you can just suspend it at any point. And, um, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm, I've am i reached the stage at the moment in my daily commute where I stand next to people who are now... I've been standing next to them so long that they've just been really getting on my nerves. <laughs> um, there's a man who uh, just holds his co- coffee in a really smug way. Ugh, um, I hate that. No, I, I know, and I know I shouldn't. But And then I just get on and I play... Do you know my... his name? <laughs> is it on the coffee? No, I don't know, no. Uh, it's not a Starbucks he goes to. I know okay. that, he, that he meets a chap called Andrew in the morning. Hello, right, morning, Andrew. And then they'll call. <laughs> I hope they don't listen. There is a guy in that group who reads games. TM. Um, really? <laughs> good. Say. Good. Yes. No. I, absolutely. I think. But it, Jordan, maybe you could put something in games. TM. Okay. About like this a, dude. a missed connection no, style. Yes. <laughs> no. So I don't. So I don't. So he isn't this man. But they they sometimes speak to each other. Um. So I hope he doesn't listen to one like that. But if you do, um, I do. I don't mind you. <laughs> um. But yeah, I tell you what. I arrive at King's Cross completely chilled out, having shot a load of hell gas in the face. Uh, thoroughly recommend it. It'll probably be in the, in the uh, any PlayStation sales in the new year. I recommend you pick it up. Seven out of ten. Fantastic. Jordan, what have you been up to? I've been playing Tales from the Borderlands, Ooh. which is kind of like Borderlands, except instead of shooting, you do talking. And instead of bajillions of guns, there are bajillions of words. Oh. It's uh, from Telltale Games, so it's kind of like The Walking Dead, except not with zombies, with um, with Borderlands people instead. Now, Simon, as an avid listener to the, as a, <laughs> As an avid listener to the show, you will know this already. Simon has a love-hate relationship with Telltale Games. Isn't that right, Simon? Do very much so, yeah. Which state are you in right now? I love them. Okay, yeah. So, so you, you know, let's see how the rest of this goes. I mean, it's okay. Um, what format have you been playing on? I've been playing it on Xbox One. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it's a bit buggy on the Xbox. It freezes and things, which is something I, I'm not really used to getting on a console. Th- that's quite common with their games, though. No, <laughs> right. no, it is. <laughs> like, part so, of the experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, so, if you think about it, Jordan, often life freezes too. <laughs> you know, you're just walking along and everything just holds up. You I mean, that's restart. just for you. Okay. Um, but you, there are two protagonists. There's one who's a kind of um, corporate stooge guy. Um, and then there's one who's a, a woman who is um, kind of grew, grew up in the slums and she's a con artist. And they um, they come together and then I get the feeling it's going to be a kind of funny cast show type game. Okay, but this is just the, the introductory episode. Do you need to know a lot about Borderlands in order to enjoy it? Not really, although there are a few in-jokes in there for people who have played Borderlands and also for people who've played The Walking Dead and Telltale's other games. Um, you know where things pop up in the corner, like Clementine will remember that in The Walking Dead. Yeah. It does things like... Um, uh, so and so won't remember that if you've punched them and they've and they've gone wow. unconscious, or um, uh, you so and so is glad that you didn't punch her in the face or something like that. Okay. Um, but it's got the same problem as all the other Telltale games in that um, you think that you're making decisions, but you're really not, and things just happen the same regardless of what you do. How do you know that? Because I played it twice. Mm, That's a problem. You should never play. Yeah, you should never. Well, play I was games. reviewing it, and I thought I'd better, you know, be thorough. Never um. be thorough. <laughs> if yeah. if ethics are taught one thing, it's yeah. never be thorough. 
Um, but unfortunately, I um, because I've already reviewed it and I already gave it a score, I don't want to deviate from the score I already gave, so I'm going to have to give it 7 out of 10. Yeah, that's fair enough, I guess. Steve, what have you been playing? But playing Spelunky, still a solid 7 out of 10, but in addition to that, uh, I've been playing Bang Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, um, everything up front, know the developer. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know... Also, disclaimer, there's no nudity Don't in it. want this to affect my review. I'm actually uh, privileged enough to be uh, playing this game before release. Right, actually, okay. Uh, a couple of times wanted to mention it on the show, but didn't feel it was quite ready. It was embargo, wasn't it? Was it was embargo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Bangman, it's a single-screen jumping and shooting game. You have to avoid enemies who cycle back and forth on a platform. You have to shoot them, but when you shoot them you recoil the number of squares of the ammunition that you've picked up. Uh, Escalates in difficulty, different enemies arrive, and ultimately you will die, just like real life. Uh Uh-oh. It is is a uh, very, very addictive game, as we've come to expect from (laughs) the developer. What's your your games company called? Byronic Games. Byronic Games. Just because you have to type in a field in in, uh, in Google. It's kind of what they do. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's fantastic. It's free to play as well, isn't it, Simon? It's free uh, to play. Uh, free to get. <laughs> yeah, you can get it. Uh, free to get. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? I think it's turned it's out really, okay. really good. It's really, Thank really you. strong. Thank you. Um, yeah, so you should all go and play that. I guess that concludes concludes the review section. Splunky's good too. Seven yeah. out of ten. Right, the end of the show. What? Uh, let's have some sort of Christmas music on because this is the last time we'll see you before Christmas, isn't it? Simon? It is. Yeah. Except for, except, for, except for Friday and tomorrow night. Um, yes, the Friday Christmas party. We are really, 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 really excited about that. Of course, uh, not all of you will be able to attend because it's in London and because it's sold out as well, almost sold out. We've got now. people sleeping over though, haven't we? Yeah, we people have. <laughs> Keith Stewart's sleeping in the pub. <laughs> Did you see that? Is that right? Yeah. Is that like for the PlayStation 4 pop-up shop? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. Um, he's sleeping there. Uh, Steve Owen asked to sleep at my house. I'm like, yeah, of course you can. You do realise it's miles away and I'm going to have to leave early, don't you? And he went, oh, OK, um, in which case, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, you can stay here any time. I just wouldn't recommend doing it on Friday. Fantastic. Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll be doing our Secret Santa. We'll be doing the Christmas karaoke. We've got loads of new Christmas songs. Good stuff. We have to go in. We've got three versions of uh, that Mariah Carey song now, All I Want for Christmas is You. If you were here last year, you'll remember All I Want for Christmas is Doom. Right. Uh, there's a couple more plays on that. And some brilliant, brilliant new stuff. Lee Alexander today said she's going to be writing a classic. I want someone to do Christmas rapping as well. What could that be? Is that the Spice Girls song? Uh, it was previously, it's a cover by the Spice yeah. Girls, but uh, yes, it's effectively right. yes. Uh, so if you can think of a Christmas rapping song, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, so uh, it'd be good. We hope to see you all there. Jordan, thank you so much for coming in. That's okay. Uh, do come on again, won't you? Uh, I'll try. Good. Well, let us know when you're next in town. Uh, and if we don't see you before then we'll see you we'll meet you at the Guardian <laughs> I'll be at the Christmas party <laughs> okay well we'll see you then then we'll meet you alright okay cool uh, Simon thanks once again for coming in sure uh, is this the last time we're ever going to see you uh, no so will you definitely be here next week no then I will be in Germany <laughs> so you are coming back yes do you promise yes okay, okay good and uh, well we'll see you on One Life Left next year Simon yeah. me and Anne will be back next week and until then Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.